Welcome back to the control and coordination of plants. We have a look at plant movements. As plants are always rooted or fixed to the ground, they cannot move from place to place, place, to place like animals do. However, certain plants, certain parts of the plant, like the shoots, the flowers, the fruits, the leaves, they all respond to the stimuli and move in a direction where the stimuli attracts them from. Plants respond to growth with the help of auxins. Depending on the amount of auxins present within the particular plant, in a particular region within the plant, that portion of the plant will grow faster than the plant that has less auxins. That's the reason why plants have the tendency to bend. Let's have a look at the various topics we intend to look at. Plant movement, how it takes place. We will be looking at what we refer to as tropism. What is tropism? What kind of tropisms are there? How do they take place? Why are they important? And of course, what do we mean by nastic movement within plants and how or why it takes place? Tropisms. This is just the growth movement of a plant in response to your stimulus. It is based on the direction of the stimulus and this decides as to where or which direction the growth of the plant will be. Say for example, if a plant is put in a lighted room with a bulb, the plant will have the tendency to grow towards that lighted bulb. As it says here that the growth pattern of a plant can be based on the nature of the tropism because there are different kinds. If the plant bends or grows towards the stimulus, it has a positive effect. Hence, as a result, it is called as a positive tropism. If the plant tends to bend and grow away from the direction of the stimulus, it will have a negative effect on its growth. Hence, it will be termed as a negative tropism. Control and coordination in the means in the form of tropisms. Let's have a look at the different kind of tropisms. We have the phototropism, which deals with light. Geotropism, that deals with gravity. Chemotropism, dealing with chemicals. Hydrotropism, dealing with water. And of course, thigmotropism, that deals with touch. What is phototropism? When a plant responds to light, which is the stimulus, this is termed as a positive tropism, as the shoot will always bend or grow towards the direction of the sunlight. Geotropism, this is when the plant responds to gravity. This again is a positive tropism, as the roots always grow downwards into the soil. Chemotropism is when plants respond to a particular chemical. It again is a positive form of tropism. Example, the pollen tube in a flower always grows towards the ovules. This helps the pollen grains to travel through the pollen tube into the ovary and fertilize the ovules. Hydrotropism dealing with water. We know we have different kinds of roots. You have prop roots, of course, that grow from the bottom or from the ground up. And you have the normal tap and the fibrous roots that grow down into the ground. Roots always grow in the direction of the source of water because this is essential as an element for the development of the plant. In doing so, they always defy the law of gravity because depending on the nature of the plant, the roots can grow either upwards, sideways, but more or less they always grow downwards. 
Thus, as a result, since they always grow in the direction of water, they are said to be hydrotrophic. Thigmotropism. We may have come across situations where when we touch a plant, its leaves automatically shut. Certain plants are weak, like creepers, example, we call them tendrils as they have a tendency to basically grow on to other plants for support and to help them by winding up around them. As a result, they grow because they are growing towards sunlight. So this is an example of positive tropism because the response from the weaker plant to the stimulus is the light by clinging and winding on to the stronger plant, enabling it to grow. What do we mean by nasties or nastic movement? We know that animals, plants have the tendency to always respond to a stimuli. But when a response by a plant to a certain or a specific stimulus is ignored, it is called a nastic movement. Generally, plants, meaning their entire body, always grow in the direction of this stimulus. But when it comes to nastic movements, parts of the plant tend to behave differently. Say, for example, the closing of petals of a flower or the folding of leaves. This behavior is called thick monasty. In certain cases, petals of a flower open according to the intensity of the light. If the weather, the climate is bright and shiny and sunny, the petals remain open in certain flowers. But if the light begins to fade or when it becomes dark, these petals automatically close. This behavior is called photo nasty. I hope you've enjoyed the presentations. If you'd like to see more presentations, you can always visit us on our website at www.arrangeacademy.com. Furthermore, for a subscription, you could always check us out on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash arrangeacademy. You can subscribe to us also on our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash C slash Academy. Thank you.